Is oil a dirty word? Before I give you my take on this, let me tell you how I came to be on the stage today. My name's Chad Park, and I'm with the Natural Step Canada. We're an international NGO that's been uh, a leader in the sustainable development movement for more than 25 years, originally founded in Sweden. Last year, I moved my young family from a timber frame home in the beautiful Gatineau Valley in Quebec to an older home right near West Edmonton Mall. <laughs> Why? That's a good question. Well, I'm from there. It's home for me. I even cheer for this hockey team. <laughs> As a sustainability leader from oil country, I've often found myself playing the role of translator, translating Albertan to non-Albertans, and vice versa. We're facing a big challenge as a country. Alberta's in the crosshairs, but it's a national challenge with global implications. That's why I felt drawn to come back to my roots for the opportunity to lead an exciting initiative called the Energy Futures Lab. And so, is oil a dirty word? I like this question. It asks us to confront the fact that there are two competing visions at play about Canada's energy future. Vision number one, let's see, I'll go here, is business as usual, basically. Global demand for energy is going up. We've got decades still as oil and gas producers, so we should maximize the economic benefits for at least the next few decades. And by the way, we're way safer and way more ethical than most other oil producers. Vision number two is climate driven. Climate change requires that we limit global warming to two degrees. This should guide our energy policy and our investment priorities. The technology, it's available and increasingly competitive. Fossil fuels don't fit with this goal and any investments like pipelines that lock us into the other vision is setting us on the wrong path. There are people who hold versions of each of these two visions in every part of Canada. But the regional dynamics are important enough that I don't think it's too dramatic to ask, do these two visions mean Canada is on a collision course? Can they be reconciled? I believe they can, with a lot of work. And the path to reconciling these two competing visions is not just negotiation. It's co-creation. As Canadians, can we find any common ground any creative room between oil is dirty and unsustainable and oil is our economic lifeblood. We can and we must. We have massive public and private investments in these resources. Their development has been a major source of prosperity for the whole country. Plus, this is personal. Some of us have friends, relatives, children, who work in oil and gas, or maybe we work there ourselves. We know that these are not bad people. Having the source of their livelihoods and our prosperity labeled dirty, it gets our backs up. But the response can't simply be to rebrand. This, this is a conversation I often have with my friends who work in oil and gas. Better narratives, slicker ad campaigns about jobs, or about the emissions of rail versus pipelines, they're not gonna cut it, even if they're true. Ultimately, they're losing arguments. Scientific facts tell us that we have to find a way to provide energy without exceeding two degrees of warming. And the public is waking up. Culture eats strategy for breakfast, after all. That's what we're told. And science is science. So instead of with us or against us debates, our dialogue needs to be about how we can help enable the transition to a carbon competitive economy. If we can't credibly articulate a role for hydrocarbons in the transition to a low carbon future, alongside the development of renewable energy and, and energy storage technologies and so on, then we're hooped. Now to many, the thought of oil as part of a sustainable future is counterintuitive. That's only because we've become so trapped in our belief that the way we produce and use it today is the only way to do it. 
In fact, hydrogen and carbon atoms will surely play an important role in a sustainable future. We just can't continue to produce and use them in a way that emits greenhouse gases, at least not nearly on the scale we do today. How else could it be? My bet is that in the future, instead of burning hydrocarbons, we'll be using carbon to make things. This is possible. The Global Carbon X Prize was launched last year to find technologies to turn carbon dioxide into materials. And Canada can lead on this. In fact, one of the fellows uh, of the Energy Futures Lab, he's here actually, is developing technology to turn CO2 into carbon-based nano nanofibers. I can hardly even say it. <laughs> he's trying to turn CO2 into yoga mats. Seriously. We're not there yet, but this is ultimately where we need to get to if we want to make use of these resources instead of ending up with stranded assets. We simply can't get to where we need to with tweaks to business as usual. We also need some moonshots. Many people want to be part of a positive, forward-looking effort to help shape the future. They don't just want to cope with the future or suffer its consequences. I bet most of you are part of that group. It's the radical middle. This is the spirit and the work of the Energy Futures Lab. An amazing group of innovators from a wide range of backgrounds across Alberta have come together. Oil and gas executives, clean tech entrepreneurs, First Nations leaders, government officials, environmental advocates, and so on. I think there's about five of them in the room, actually. And I must say, in the mix, there are supporters of both the NDP government and the Wild Rose opposition and probably every other party as well. This group is committed to the hard work of finding common ground between them and to finding breakthroughs together. And we want you to be involved too. You can get on energyfutureslab.com. You'll meet the fellows and you can stay in the loop with the latest developments. There'll be lots of ways for you to engage in the next few months. So back to my question, is oil a dirty word? No, it doesn't need to be but we'll need to reimagine its role in our future. Stand down from our high horses, empathize with people who, who hold different narratives, and focus our innovation efforts on big goals that we can achieve only by working together. Thank you. <laughs>